the values segment that we do every month. It's time for that again. And this one is particularly good. It, you may wonder when I tell you delegating authority. Well, why is that a value? Why is that up there with the golden rule? Uh, why is that up there with integrity? Well, it's it's a very necessary uh, character trait if you're going to be successful in business. And it's a necessary character trait in life as well. The reason for that is that there's a limited amount of time, right? We don't have an infinite amount of time. We can't deliberate over every decision. We can't do every task ourselves. Eventually, in order to grow, you have to delegate authority to other people so that they can do some things, take it off your plate so that you can focus on the things that only you can do. Now, as an entrepreneur, I can tell you that this was one of the hardest lessons for yeah. me to learn. I've talked to you, Psyche, and I know that this was a lesson that was hard for you to learn. And I think it's something that that everyone who gets involved in building a business eventually has to go through. I was actually having breakfast with my pastor this morning at church, and um, he he goes through the same thing. You know, we've got a growing congregation and our staff has grown quite a bit over the last few years. And it's like, well, how do you manage all the responsibilities? Well, the the way you do that is to find competent people, trustworthy people that you can delegate authority to so that they can handle some things, which frees your time up to do the things that only you can do. If you're the business owner, it's your vision that you're implementing. It's your ideas that you're putting into action. So the buck stops with you. Yep. Well, when you're getting started, maybe you can't afford employees. Maybe you do have to wear all the hats and you have to do the bookkeeping and you have to do, you know, cleaning the, the toilets in the bathroom and you have to make the coffee in the morning and you have to answer the phone and all that other stuff. But as you grow and as you develop your business, you need to find the low hanging fruit where you can delegate those tasks to other people. Because if, if your time is worth $100 an hour and you can hire somebody for $15 an hour to do some administrative tasks, will you give that person the $15 an hour and 40 hours of your time so that you can use those 40 hours to go make $100 an hour. Yeah. It's really the key to growing your business. It's really the key to, to seeing the growth overall. And this is the, the most interesting thing. This is actually a lesson I learned from my pastor when I was growing up in church. He always used to quote Exodus chapter 18. And it's a very famous passage because Moses is sitting in judgment over the Israelites. Moses knows the law, and he is the one who decides in a conflict between the people who's right and who's wrong. Well, his father-in-law observes that from basically dawn until dusk, he's got people coming to him all day long with their problems. And it's wearing him out. So his father-in-law says, you know, you really can't keep doing this. You're going to wear yourself too thin. My advice to you, basically, you know, this is paraphrasing, is find people who have good character and who are competent and delegate authority to them. Because most of the small stuff, they'll be able to work out amongst themselves. But when it's a very serious issue that only you can deal with, then they'll bring it to you. But in that case, you're not going to see a situation where you wear yourself too thin. And from a business perspective, from an economic perspective, it actually allows a lot of positive things. One of those is specialization. So you develop a system of production, whether you're producing a good or a service. Each person has their own group of tasks that they focus in on that they learn those specific skills and then perfect those skills over time. Well, 
when you learn about economics, you learn that specialization is one of the keys to economic growth because it is far easier for one person to learn one skill and to do that skill repetitively than it is for them to learn every single skill that they need to survive. That's why we have such a high standard of living. But another thing that's that's great about it is you're actually creating jobs for other people. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. You're going to need people who have entry-level skills to do some of the entry-level jobs. That might be a receptionist. Yeah. That might be, you know, some someone who stocks the shelves, right? There are a lot of relatively low-skilled positions, entry-level positions, where people get their foot in the door, and then they begin to develop skills that become more useful. And as they become more valuable to the company, they move higher up, take on more responsibility and more complicated tasks. And that as they move up the chain, that creates a job for someone else who's entering the labor market. And it's a great system and it works very well over time. But I know so many business owners that just cannot let go. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been there, yeah. you know, because the, the I can't let somebody else do that. They're not going to do it as well as I yeah. could. Well, they may not answer the phone as well as you, and they may not scrub the toilet as well as you, and they may not stock the shelf just as neatly as you would. But if you continue to do all that stuff, you're never going to reach your potential. Yeah. Yeah, I agree 100% with you, and I've suffered from that problem. And what about the line when we say, well, I can do it faster than I can teach them to do it. <laughs> so that's how we justify in our minds. Well, we might as well just do it. <laughs> but it's a big one. But, yeah. you know, it's it, teach, give a man a fish, you'll exactly. feed him once, teach a man to fish, and you'll feed him for the rest of his life. You know, it's like, okay, you you might be right. The time it takes for you to do it one time yeah. is less than the amount of time that yeah. it would take you to teach someone else to do it. But once they know how to do it, how much time do you save over the long haul? Exactly. And so let me respond to that and kind of target because you hit the economic side of it. Right. And, and then the, uh, the the physical side of the business. I want to I want to kind of tackle it from the spiritual side a little bit. Yeah, and, and and to some of the listeners, I might be stretching it a little bit, so bear with me and follow me through this. But there really is a spiritual aspect, a mental aspect to this, and I call it mental health, spiritual, whatever you want. So the, a small percentage of us, of Americans or whoever, uh, this entire world, a small percentage of us are, are going to become entrepreneurs or are entrepreneurs. And it takes a different person, you know, just I'm not saying bad or good, but it, it takes a different person to want to go through that. <laughs> and 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 it's and it becomes either bad or good, depending who you are. But, you know, to be willing to tackle on that responsibility. You have a calling for something greater than being the guy that wears all the hats or the girl. Um you're destined for more. And and I don't mean that in a bad way to put down any of the jobs you're doing or any of the jobs that you will hire someone else. I say that because there's a small percentage of people that first are able to do that, and then they have to be willing to do that. And once they do that, you can't get to that point until you delegate the responsibilities that you just don't need, don't have or need to devote the time to. But then let's look at it from the other spiritual side. And everybody can relate to this. I'll keep it pretty simple on this side. What happens when you're at work, whether it's a coworker or a supervisor above you, someone below you? What happens when somebody has done a job and they've done it very well and they're noticed for it? You know, they're, they're commended for it. Or someone else in their workplace knows that they did this. Or even if it's not even that, they just know that they did this. And they know to the, they say to themselves, man, six months ago, I could not do this. And here I am, I just did whatever this is. Whether you're a receptionist, you're a welder, you're a roofer, 
you're a, a wait staff, a bartender, it doesn't matter what you are. There's things you couldn't do that somebody has helped you along the way and showed you and you've become familiar with the process and pretty good at it. You know, that's kind of that's a value in itself, I would say. You're helping lift up the people around you and you're making better people everywhere. And in order for us and everyone to get where we want to go, we we need to bring as many people with us. Right. I mean, lifting them up makes us a better place. So that's kind of the angle I'm, I'm thinking of it from. I mean, how beautiful is that when you notice, you know, the positive effect it has on your coworkers? The Purposeful Podcast.